Welcome back everyone to the Deep Dive. I'm your host, Detective Trogdor, and today we're going to be discussing the Great Percocy Fire of 1988. But before we go any further, I'd like to ask if you could please subscribe, like, give a comment, do what you can to help support the channel, share this with your friends. Uh, anything that you do is, is very helpful and will help me grow the channel as well as get some feedback to understand what, what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Before we go any further, we have a sponsor ad, and I'd like to present it right now. Does this ever happen to you? Ah! This coffee sucks! I'm sure you hate your coffee, don't you? I'm sure that you do because everyone these days is drinking something that they can just find at a store willy-nilly. It's just it's just beans and then you're pouring hot water over it and you're like, great, cool, bean water. Might as well be using black beans at this point. On the other hand, there is another option. Ybor Coffee Roasters is a veteran-owned company based out of Augusta, Georgia, but they will ship anywhere in the continental United States. Their coffee is ethically sourced from many different sources such as Brazil. Rwanda, and plenty of other countries. They have a wide variety of different flavors of coffee that'll suit you no matter if you like a dark roast or a light roast. I personally prefer the Watch Standard Blend, which I couldn't get a bag of because it's in that high demand. You can get buy the coffee as whole bean, or you can buy a ground. They also offer different varieties of tea, which I will just post credit in right here because I'm here really just to talk about coffee. So whether you're a coffee drinker or a tea drinker, Yabora Coffee has something for you. So go to this website, yaboracoffee.com. Find them on Facebook. Find them on Instagram. I think they have a TikTok. Yes, they have a TikTok. Uh, Snapchat, maybe. Some other thing. Thanks again, Yabora, for sponsoring me and giving me some awesome coffee for my family to enjoy. There we go. There it is. Also, since the last video, I finally hit 11 subscribers, so it's about time that I get awarded what all YouTubers are looking for. Ten subscribers. There's my, there's my YouTube award for that. I'm doing pretty well. All right, so today's video. The Great Perks Fire of 1988. What happened, what caused it, what can we learn from it? It's a warm Sunday afternoon on June 26, 1988, and two 12-year-old boys are deciding to get in some 12-year-old boy trouble, like always, and they went to the lumber yard and started lighting small patches of dry grass on fire. The location where they were doing this was actually in some old coal bins that had been used for overflow storage for the lumber yard. And these coal bins were not some out of out of the ordinary place for kids to be hanging out. It was a frequent spot that kids in the area would go and meet up and hang out at. On this day, these two boys were lighting small patches of grass on fire and then quickly putting them out. And at one point, they got tired of the lighting patches of grass on fire and they decided to go... Uh, downtown a little bit and go to the pool. Well, unfortunately for them and the rest of the town, they did not put out the fire completely. Since this was in some old coal bins, there was still some leftover coal dust. There was some sawdust from all the different lumber as well as there was, you know, dry lumber nearby. So this small localized fire of dry grass was now turning into a raging fire. Veteran firefighter Jeffrey Scheller was on his way back home when he noticed smoke coming out of a shed nearby over at the lumber yard where the coal bins were at. He immediately went down to the firehouse and sounded the alarm. Now remember, this is 1988, so you couldn't just call by cell phone. So you had to physically go there or call somebody from a landline and tell them what was going on. By the time the trucks had arrived on the scene, it was no longer just a small smoke smoking shack. It was now a full blaze. By the time the fire trucks had arrived, the Moyer building was completely up in flames and was quickly spreading its fire to the surrounding buildings. While trying to put out the fire... The heat from the fire on the Moyer building was so intense that it actually caused the awnings on the opposite side of the street where Lecher's 5 and 10 was to catch on fire. For five and a half hours, the town of Percocy was ablaze. Buildings such as the American Hotel, the Moyer-Katner building, Lecher's 5 and 10, 
and some of Shelley's and Son's lumberyard buildings had caught on fire and were burning to the ground. The fire continued to burn out of control and moved to the Herstein Building, Perkesee Improvement Building, and the Moyer Katner Funeral Home. Many businesses and homeowners in the area started spraying down the roofs for fear that the heat from the fire as well as any kind of falling ash and embers would catch their houses on fires, but thankfully the fire had started, stopped at the Moyer Katner property. Temporary canvas pools were set up in the street while trucks were running down to the Perkiomen Creek, filling up and then dumping into these canvas pools because firefighting efforts were taking place in so many different areas that it was such a strain on the water main that they couldn't keep up with demand. Residents that couldn't directly help with the firefighting effort itself were amassing food for the firefighters to help them you know, recharge their batteries as they're going on, as well as they were collecting different clothing articles, toiletries, household needs that people would need after the fire because multiple apartment buildings had burned down. At 7.55 p.m., after five and a half hours of firefighting, the fire was declared under control. 275 firefighters from 50 different companies in the three counties attended the fire to help extinguish it. Only 16 people were injured during this fire, thankfully, and most of them were only firefighters, so people actually directly impacting the fire. During their efforts, unfortunately, two of Perkesee's fire trucks were lost in the fire. One was a snorkel and ladder truck, which was lost when a large fireball had burst from the Moyer Katner building, burst into the street, and caught the truck on fire. Thankfully, like I said, no one died from this, but the firefighters in the immediate area around the truck had to abandon their posts because they could not move the truck without hitting power lines. Two people were up in the bucket at the time, Greg Nice and Clyde Snyder, who fortunately were able to jump down to the roof of Miss Cindy's dance studio and were able to escape the blaze of the truck. The other truck that was lost in the fire was the pumper truck. The fire was ruled as arson, and the initial charges were arson endangering persons, arson by reckless burning, risking a catastrophe, failure to prevent a catastrophe, criminal mischief, two counts of recklessly endangering another person, and six counts of conspiracy were all leveled against these two boys that had just been starting little grass fires in a coal bin. The boys were arrested two days later after witnesses had spotted them on location just before the fire had occurred as they were probably leaving to go to the pool. They testified in court that they thought that they had honestly put out the fires and that they were not trying to intentionally cause harm to anyone or anything. Since the boys were minors, they were not named, and they only got charged with failure to report a fire, which resulted in 500 hours of community service each. People tried blaming the parents for causing the fire, but Doylestown attorney Christopher J. Serpico said that it would be difficult, if not impossible, to prove in court that the boys' parents were liable for damages. The fire had leveled an entire block and a half of historic downtown Perkesee. Leicester's 5 and 10 was leveled with five apartments inside. The American House Hotel was built in 1870 and had 12 apartments. The Herstein Building, which was built before 1870, had five apartment buildings. The Moyer Katner Building and the Perkesee Improvement Building. Following the fire, a committee was established to help rebuild historic Perkesy and to rejuvenate the town. And that task force was actually named the Perkesy Old Town Association. 36 people were officially homeless as of that day because of all the apartments burning down. So what about the insurance payout? Lesher's and Shelley's and Son Lumberyard, the place where the fire had started, were only insured for a total of $1 million each. Each company tried to counter sue each other. In January 1990, the two insurance companies representing Shelley's and Sons filed suits in the U.S. District Court against Lesher's, saying that the store was negligent in selling a cigarette lighter to one of the boys. However, Perkesy attorney William Roger defended that Lesher's had a policy not to sell lighters to young boys, as well as the lighter found on the scene was not one that was actually sold at uh, Lesher's 5 and 10. In May 1990, Bargen Enterprises, the owner of Lesher's, countersued the Bucks County court system against Shelley's and Sons. According to the suit, the lumber yard was negligent because it left stockpiles of woods not protected by fencing. Lesher's also named the two boys and their parents who started the fire in their suit. Their claim was that the, parent, the boys' parents had failed to teach their sons about the lethality of their conduct as well as they allowed access to, quote, incendiary materials, i.e. the lighters. Fortunately, 
that case never stuck. Rozier would only say that we were satisfied with the resolution of the case, given the fact that we knew it still wouldn't be anywhere near enough to compensate the people for their losses. So of the $9 million in damage that was done, and some sources say that it was 12 to $13 million, only $1 million was paid out in damages to all the areas. Rightfully so, with that little payout that happened, a lot of the buildings in Perk C did not get rebuilt. For the longest time for my youth, there was large open lots in Perk C along 7th Street and Market, where I truly did not understand that there actually was a building there. My parents had told me when I was young that there was a, a big fire in town and it had burned down a lot of the buildings. But I did not fully grasp the concept of how big these buildings were until honestly when they started rebuilding them when I was in about middle school. So we're going to say in like 2004, 2005 time frame, they started rebuilding parts of the town. It wasn't until recently that it actually completely rebuilt the lot that the old Leshers was built on. Now, Leshers, when I was growing up as well, there was another store called Leshers 2. Because when Leshers burned down in the one building, they just moved the store down the street a little ways. That's the only store that I ever knew. So when my parents would talk about the old Leshers, I never truly understood that it was never in that original spot. So what can we learn from this? We definitely shouldn't let little boys play with lighters. We also learned that you should probably have a larger insurance policy on your buildings. And we also learned that just being a strong town and strong community is really what matters at the end of the day. Because this fire was devastating to the properties, it was devastating to the building owners and the people that had lived inside these buildings. But the town of Perkasie is still as strong as ever. It is still growing. It is still one of the places that if I had the money and I had the, I guess, the job that would bring me back in that area, I would love to move back to Perkasie. I'd like to thank you again for watching my video. Please, please, please watch my other videos. Give me some suggestions on what kind of stuff you would like to see. It does not have to be Pennsylvania centric, but that just seems to be the kind of way that I'm leaning right now. Any kind of comment down below, whether it's positive, you can tell me that you hate my videos. Give me a like, give me a thumbs down, just give me some kind of interaction to tell me that people are watching these and they're actually seeing the messages all the way through. Please, please, please uh, check out Eubora Coffee. So with all that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Remember, like, subscribe, leave a comment, do all that cool stuff, share with your friends, and uh, I hope to hear from you guys soon. All right, have a good day.